Welcome to the mansion that my great great grandfather bought almost 100 years ago for seven thousand dollars. So during these last hundred years, since my great great grandfather bought this house, my family has owned it the entire time. And during that time, the electricity upstairs completely stopped working. The house is actually outfitted with the hundred year old electrical system, which is not safe. The plumbing, well, most of it, did not work at all. And the insulation in the walls was falling out. Every single window just leaked like an absolute sieve. So I decided, you know what? We're gonna come in and do an absolute full gut and we are going to 100% restore and remodel the entire house. Now here's the thing. I'm not a carpenter, I'm not an electrician, I'm not a plumber, and I'm not a concrete guy. I am a farmer. And growing up on the farm as a little boy, we had some pretty tough years, and my family did not have the resources to be able to hire people to do work around the farm, so we had to learn how to do everything ourselves. So my grandpa learned an incredible amount, and he was not afraid to dive into any project. My dad's the same way. My brother and I learned that from them. And so when we were working on anything, Thing. If one of us didn't know how to do it, then we would go find a friend who knew how, or a family member, or a friend of a friend, whoever we could find who would come work with us side by side and teach us. So when it came to fully remodeling and restoring this house, I wanted to do the exact same thing. So I reached out to my neighbor, Justin, who's been a carpenter for the last 30 years, and he pretty much knows how to do everything on the inside of a house, and my friend, Roman, who also pretty much knows how to do everything inside of the house. So between us three and all the people we know, we are doing this with our own two hands. So if you're new to the channel, hello, welcome, bienvenidos. My name is Cole, I am a farmer. We farm corn and soybeans in central Iowa, and we are grave diggers for 18 cemeteries. So I just have one little request for you. If you enjoy our content and you want to help support the channel, the absolute best thing you can do is just watch the entire video all the way through. So with that being said, today is a really exciting day today because it marks the start of month number four of us working on this project pretty much every single day, which that comes out to about 1,500 man hours of labor. And this is what we've got done so far. First things first, before I started working on the house, I actually cleaned up the property outside first and I removed about 1 million pounds of scrap metal from the yard. So that kept me busy for about the first 10 years. And then once we got started working on the house, we ripped off all of the old siding, we replaced the siding, and while we were doing that, we pulled off the old rotten porches and then built a brand new wraparound porch. We then got to work up in the attic that had been filled with birds for about 30 years. We demoed everything from the old wood on the floor to the rotten insulation just below the floorboards. And then once we got everything all pulled out and cleaned up, we spray foamed it. Then we tore out the hardwood floors in the upstairs of the house. We tore out the hardwood floors in the downstairs of the house. We removed all of the lath and plaster in the upstairs. We removed all of the lath and the plaster in the downstairs. That whole lath and plaster project consisted of 10 rooms, three closets, two staircases, and a giant hallway. We then removed all of the old insulation in the upstairs and downstairs. We demoed the kitchen. We demoed the master staircase. We removed the antique radiators. We demoed the basement. We built a new kitchen floor. We built a new kitchen wall. We tore out the chimney. We built a new living room floor. We built a new pantry and bathroom floor. We tore out a giant big creepy big black tank in the basement. We built a new kitchen support beam. We built a new dining room floor support beam. We built a new kitchen ceiling. We demoed the center basement foundation. We poured a new footing and wall in the basement. We then built new support beams in the basement. Then we built the kitchen pantry. We built the living room wall. As you can see, we've been pretty busy. So this brings us to today. We spent a long time working on the main floor of the house and we are now on the second floor and we are going to start tearing up this subfloor so we can be replacing it 
with a brand new one. So before we get started pulling up any of this subflooring, we want to make sure we have the floor on the same plane from one side of the room to the other. So we want the base of that wall to be at the exact same height as the base of that wall. We have a giant beam under that wall. We have a giant beam under this wall. We need to do a little bit of fine tuning on this beam to mess with the elevation a little bit first. So that's task number one. And since that beam is held up by these big posts that run down to the basement, we have to start in the basement to lift things up in the basement to be able to adjust things upstairs. So we're going to the basement. Roman, Roman, are you excited? Yeah, jack things up again. How about you, Justin? Are you excited? Oh, overly, yeah. overly yeah. excited. Ecstatic. Ecstatic. Wait. Justin. Yeah. Why do we need to cut this out? Because we're putting two two by eights right here. And that's for what? More strength for our beam. Our jacks to sit on. One side on lands these? on this and the other side doesn't. Just sits on the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We cannot have that. OSHA violation number one. All right, boys, we're 30 seconds into the day. What'd you do? I was just showing the OSHA violation. What's that? Sparks? No, I was standing over a toilet. Oh. You could drown if you fell. Put your head in there. <laughs> Diagnosis, drown in his own poop. You want to jack it up now up there? It's all ready. All I need to do is just pop it somewhere. Let's see a bit. It's fine. Speed square. Roman, how are you gonna cut that without your speed square? I just have to follow the line. Okay, I need to confess and report to OSHA. I violated this one right here. So good news is Roman doesn't realize that I nabbed his speed square, so now I need to be able to get Justin's speed square, and I'm gonna hide mine up here, because otherwise they're gonna come up and get mine, but they can't find theirs. I'll hide it right there. Get out of there. <laughs> you sound like a dog. <laughs> I thought I felt somebody creeping up on me. I got his speed square. Hit it back here. So our way of getting our sister floor joists all together was we simply just took another two. So this is a sister set right over this block wall. We just took two more that go from this big beam all the way over to the edge plate of the house. So we got those all leveled up in place and then we shoved in a bunch of shims underneath lifting it up. So by us shoving those shims in, it ended up lifting the ceiling down below, which as a result ended up lifting the floor right beneath us here in the kitchen up, which therefore pushed on these big beams and helped push that up upstairs. You can see the little dip we have right here. We have the level. It is flush down there, but then in the middle, see how we have a gap underneath? The level should be touching the whole way. And then it goes back to touching on that end. So we have just a little bit more lifting to do down there. Roman, is this your lunchbox? Yes. With a square inside of it? Yes. Somebody must have put it to stage this whole thing. Justin! Uh, guess where I just found it? Roman's lunchbox. This is the lunchbox. This one's not mine. <laughs> what are you doing? I guess now you know who's messing with you. Yeah, where's my good square at? Okay, I need 10 footers. How am I gonna get them in there? beam situation figured out everything looks pretty stinking good everything's all tightened back up now we are in the room where we are getting ready to pull the subflooring in we need to get all these boards and stuff out of here get all the tools out of here 
so that way we have a nice clean space to work. And these boards are pretty much too long to do anything with other than stick them out the window or take some boards off up in the attic and throw them up there. So we're gonna put them up in the attic because it's raining outside. <laughs> Do you see the snow? It was raining yesterday all day, raining today. Real gray and cold and wet. We don't have any heat, but we do not care. Right, Justin? That's right, we are tough. So on the right side, you can see the staircase that goes all the way down to the entrance by the kitchen. And Justin and I and Cole are going to be working on taking up the subfloor all the way down to the exterior wall. So basically this half of the second story, second floor. Fixing and addressing uneven floor joists right in front of you. Some of them are wavy, some of them going up, some of them down. So we'll be checking those. And hopefully we can get everything ready today for the subfloor tomorrow. This cut line would be our front of work for today. So anything from here to there, we need to remove, address, fix, and then put the subflooring on. One wall is gone. Justin starts removing this section of the subflooring. We have our header placed up higher so we could work under it. And there is one more little spot here. We left these two 2x4s two to support this little header where boards are actually attached. So I'm gonna go up above and create a little like bridge that will hold it from up there and we can pull all this out then. We're up in the attic and of course we have boards in the way because our header is right here underneath of me. So first things first, remove all this stuff that's in the way and we'll get to it. And to create our bridge, to support this, I'm just gonna simply take two 2x4s, two make a T out of them, like that. The reason for that, because this is the strong side of 2x4, if I screw it like this, it's just gonna flex, where this side is much stronger. I'm gonna, I'm going to screw it together like that, put it here, and drive the screws into our board that needs to be supported. So it's basically gonna be hanging off of this structure here. Now we have this little beam that's resting on the floor joist that's going all the way through this way on one end, wall on another end, and these two screws that are basically sucking this old beam up so now we don't really need anything supporting on that side, which are those two two by fours that we can take out.
So I accidentally slept in a little bit today and you guys have already got a lot done. Did you bring lunch? No. <laughs> accidentally slept in? That's what Austin said. Accidentally on purpose slept in? No. It's snowing out, so I don't blame you. I would have been like, yeah, I'm not coming to work today. It's snowing. I'm like a polar bear. I just went to bed and all of a sudden I woke up and it was snowing. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think I was that tired. Polar bears don't hibernate. <laughs> A uh, grizzly bear. Yes. A grizzly bear in Antarctica. Since I was late to work today, I will catch you up on what Justin and Roman are planning to do. They cut a line right here in the center of the hallway, everything from this line over to the exterior wall of the house that way and completely behind me is going to be completely ripped out. And once we have everything ripped out, we are going to address these open floor joists. We have a couple that are a little high. We have a couple that are a little low. The high ones will get lowered down. The low ones, we're gonna put in new ones right beside them. So that way we get the floor on one consistent plane going from one side of the house over to the other. We also hit a little bit of a roadblock because we ordered some wood and that wood is not supposed to come here until tomorrow. So we can't lay down any of the new floor joists because we don't have the wood anyway. So we're just on demo duty. We want to fit 12 inches. We're getting a nice little start. I got a couple chunks of the floor up. I'm removing this wall right now and it's got some challenges in itself. So I'm working on that. Justin and Roman have been putting up another header board over here. So that way they can get rid of this wall because we have to get rid of the subfloor that's underneath of it. So I think they're now ready to put in a temporary beam over here to hold up the end support load of that header. A little trick that I'm gonna do here is have my board not plumb, meaning not straight up and down, but a little bit in an angle. I'm gonna drive these screws in, and once it's all tight, I'm just gonna bring the bottom to the plumb line. That's gonna raise these headers a little bit up higher, and we're gonna not have, or we're not supposed to have as much tension as not much pressure in the studs when we cut them because everything would have been brought up just a hair. So you're basically making a jack that's lifted with your own power. Kind of geometrical jack. Unfortunately, our boiler a couple weeks ago decided it was just gonna literally melt itself down so we didn't have the boiler heat anymore. Plus we pulled the radiator so our boiler heat wasn't gonna work anyway. But we had a secondary forced air furnace in the basement. We've been using that and for whatever reason that decided that was gonna die too. So we have absolutely no heat in the house. It's 42 degrees. We're all like double sweatshirted up. So uh, first off, we would like heat. We're not going to have heat <laughs> this year, but I do have my cousin coming out who's going to go over the heating and HVAC stuff that we're going to have for the house. So I'm going to look at the notes that he just brought, and Justin and Roman are going to keep tearing off some flooring. So I got three different pieces of information right here. This sheet covers all the load calculations that they figured for everything. Then we have all the floor layouts of how all of the vents and stuff are going to run in the floors. And then over here, we have pricings on things. So first off, 
let's start with our load calculations. I apologize for the noise in the background. Justin and Roman don't have a lot of common courtesy when it comes to people having conversations, so they're just being as loud as they want to be. And then I apologize for having the hood up. It's just downright stinking cold in here right now, so I'm putting it on. But when it comes to load calculations, they are figuring an outside low temperature on the heating side of negative 17 degrees Fahrenheit is what they're basing everything off of. And then when it comes to cooling, they have their load calculations based on a 95 degree Fahrenheit day at uh, the warm end of the spectrum. So for our heating load calculations, they're saying basically we need a 101,491 BTUs of heating ability and 51,407 BTUs of cooling ability. So all of their recommendations that they're laying these floor plans out on, as well as what they are giving us for quotes on things are based on those parameters for heating and cooling. The rest of everything on these sheets is pretty much Greek to me. So I really don't know what most of this means. But he circled those two numbers right there. So I know those are the two important ones. So this one's heating and this one is cooling. When it comes to floor plans, this is the basement floor plan of what we have for a layout of where all the venting is going to go. So all the ones that are a square, just like that, that is going to be feeding actually into the basement. So it's gonna be in the ceiling of the basement. And then all of the ones that are a little circle are going to be shooting up to the main floor of the house. So these are all going to be supply points for warm air and also for air conditioning. And then this is gonna be the main set of ducting. So I believe the blue side is the cold air return or the return going back to the actual heater itself. And then the red part is where it's going to be distributing out that hot air back into the house. And then it'll go down these channels and then it'll be located into different places throughout the home. So that's going to be the basement. And then we have first floor layout so we can see where everything is going to come up as far as where the registers go. Pretty much they all come up right in front of a window, which makes the most sense because traditionally that's where most of your cool air gets brought in. So they put all the heater point places there. I'm not sure what these blue Blue ones are, I have some more questions to ask. That could be a return point, or I'm, I'm really not sure what those are, to be completely honest. And then last but not least, we have for the second floor of the house. So this system is actually set up where we have two heat pumps. So this would be the upstairs one, where we have the blue side, which is the return, and then the red side, which is what actually distributes out the warm air or cool air to all the rooms. So same thing here, all these circle ones are going to be passed up into the attic. And then all these ones that are kind of like a tapered end are going to be coming from the upstairs ceiling down. So we have a little bit of a design here now, which is kind of nice. It at least gives us the ability to reference off of something. Okay, let's try a spot down here in the basement. That sounds a little bit better as far as the sound goes. So one of the problems that we have of, well, there's a lot of problems that go on when we remodel and restore a house that's over 100 years old. But one of the main things we're running into right now with this HVAC side of things is we can get these plans laid out fairly close, but we cannot quite use them as exact plans yet because we are still framing up walls throughout the entire house. We are getting things leveled out. We are rebuilding floors and things are constantly changing. Sometimes we have a plan laid out of exactly what we are going to do. We have blueprints we are going to follow and everything. And then we actually get into the project and we start building things. And then we find a problem behind a wall that we did not know was there. And then we have to change up the building process a little bit, which that makes our original set of blueprints change. And so our HVAC system is the exact same way. So we have these pieces of paper now that show us what the plan is with the variables that we have currently seen. We will be getting into more stuff, so I would guess things will probably change a little bit, but where we have the layouts of all the vents coming in and stuff, I would imagine they're probably within a couple feet of where they should be, so it gives us a really close idea. The big thing that we're running into right now is just making sure that we have the ability to actually run the venting. Since we rebuilt all the floors and we moved walls, we kind of narrowed up some of the spaces where we could have potentially ran vents. So we might have to do some rebuilding yet or some protrusions into a room such as like the pantry where we can actually get some of this venting behind the wall. This whole HVAC thing is completely brand new to me. So I'm learning with it just as much as anybody else who knows absolutely nothing about HVAC. 
But I'm just really glad we have a plan to go off of now. So that way when we're putting things together, we can be forward thinking of, hey, we have to be running some venting here at some point. So let's make sure we build this wall where we leave enough space, which is actually going to save us a lot of time in the future because we don't have to come back and redo things, which is always a plus. And then as far as the quoting system goes into everything. The disrespect. We'll try this again in the basement. They're just being loud up there, but we're not gonna stop those guys from working. So I can sit around and do general contractor paperwork and that kind of thing. But we want those guys to keep moving upstairs. So for this part, I would really appreciate some help. If you have any feedback or comments or you've been through something like this or do you actually work in this space, because I really know absolutely nothing about this stuff. I'm, I'm brand spanking new to it. I will learn as I go, but and I, people who've been in this space a lot longer and can help me maybe dodge a few potholes, it would be greatly appreciated. So starting off, they would like to do some heat pumps. Now we are going to do heated flooring in the entire house. So that is gonna be our primary source of heat. But from my understanding of my conversations with the HVAC guys, when you get to like kind of just above freezing, kind of like those late fall, early spring kind of temperatures, sometimes it's either too much or not enough when it comes to the heated flooring. So they talk, they would kind of like to do some supplemental heating during like that 40 degree temperature range. And so they talked about a heat pump, which the heat pump would double as an air conditioner as well. So when it's cool out, it can draw some warm air from the outside and bring that in to help heat. And when it's hot out, it will help draw the warm air from inside of the house out and help cool the inside of the house. So my house is 5,550 square feet and they talked about installing two of them. And the two was primarily because of the fact that for us to run venting through the house, the way our floor joists are laid out, on one floor they're laid out this way, but then the ceilings are the opposite. And so for us to be able to get venting through the entire house, we kind of foreseen that as being a little bit of a challenge. So they had one system that was ran out of the basement, and then they had one system that was ran out of the upstairs to try to alleviate that. First off, is that the best option to go running two separate ones? Our concern with running one was, is the main floor of the house going to get 85% of what we need and then the upstairs is going to be short so then like when you're climbing up the stairs you feel a 10 degree temperature change as you go into the upstairs like especially on a really hot day or one of those days where it's kind of chilly and the heated floor is not kicked in yet are we going to have that problem so would two systems be better than one the only thing that I kind of have a downside about the two systems is it's basically an extra $10,000. I have a quote here for almost $30,000 for this heat pump system for them to fully come in and install everything. So we are going to be building an addition on the other side of the house for it with a garage and a couple other rooms for the main floor of the house and a couple other upstairs rooms. And we are probably gonna need another system over there. So I would like to just do one on the existing side of the house that we have now, and then we can do another one over there. So then we have two systems in the whole house first. Versus we have two systems in the side of the house that's here now, and then we add in a whole nother system over there. And then that just gets excessively expensive in my opinion, but if the one system is not going to work on this side of the house as big as it is, I would really like to know because if we have to bite the bullet and install two, I would rather we have consistent cooling throughout the entire house and consistent heating throughout the entire house and spend a little bit extra money because 35 years from now, I'm, I'm not going to be thinking about this extra money decision then. And I, I'm going off of that mindset when it comes to having an extra system. So I'm not opposed to it, I just don't know what is the best. Do we go with two or could we get away with one bigger one? And I will say this, we are gonna be flashing around some pretty big numbers here when it comes to how expensive these units are going to be. And I guess here's the way I'm justifying this in my house. This was my great-grandfather's house who passed it on to my grand great-grandfather. Actually, I'm pretty sure he bought it from him. And then my grandpa bought it from my great-grandpa and then my grandpa gave it to us and now here we are so 
Even after doing all this work and buying this stuff to get things kind of up to snuff, we are still significantly less money than if we went out and bought a house and significantly, significantly less money than if we hired people to do all the work that we are doing. And you'll see why here in just a second when we get to the rest of these quotes. I found this kind of interesting. So we're basically looking at almost $30,000 for our heat pump systems. And then looking at a boiler just for the boiler with the installation and it looks like an extra hot water storage heating tank. We're right at $15,000 for getting everything install installed on the walls and that does not include any of our heated flooring lines or anything like that. This is just the boiler. So we're at 30 for the heat pump, 15 for the boiler. So now we're at $45,000. And then we have to get to the ducting. So the ducting is what's going to transfer all the air conditioning around the inside of the house. Think of all the little vents you see in the floor or the ceiling. That is what we were talking about here. So they actually put together three different bids for me. They put together option one, which was them doing the entire thing. Their HVAC crew coming in with all the materials, installing everything, cutting all the holes in the floor and everything. And that bid was a little bit north of $40,000. And then they had option two, which was, we would cut the holes in the floor and stuff and just kind of a lot of the prep work, maybe taping joints, uh, painting up the joints so that they were airproof and that kind of thing. And that basically knocked $7,000 off of their bill. And then they had option three, which was they would supply all the materials for us. They would schedule five visits for their crew or a member of their crew to come down and kind of supervise us and teach us how to do certain things. Otherwise, we would be doing all of the rest. And that was almost half of the option one of them coming down and doing absolutely everything. Actually, it's pretty much 2000. Yeah, it's pretty much an $18,000 labor difference <laughs> between them doing everything and us doing stuff. So like this is the importance, or I guess the power of being able to do work yourself if you are competent enough to do it and you have the tools, abilities, and resources to know how. Because an $18,000 savings for just hanging up ducting, now I'm saying just hanging up ducting, I've never done this before, so I really don't know how hard it is, but I mean, they explained it to me and it sounds like it's pretty simple, so we're gonna give it the old try. And worst case, worst, they come in and have to do it because we don't know how to do it, but best case scenario, we save $18,000 and we can apply that into other areas throughout the home instead of just simply putting it into ducting. So basically, let's say we do the cheapest option. We're already at $45,000. Now we throw another 25,000 on top of that. What are we at? $70,000 right now in just the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems in the house tent. And that does not include our heated flooring yet. So that's gonna be on top of that. Then they also threw in another bid for a recoverable, an air heat recovery unit, whatever that is. That's north of $4,000. And then there's a few little odds and ends here. So I have some research to do on what we actually want to do, what is best. I would greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate your feedback on it if you have any knowledge in this area because I honestly don't. Or I guess to add to this really quick, is there anything that I'm missing that we should have in here that we don't? Because, I mean, it's just like farming stuff. I understand most things in the farming space, but construction, HVAC, electrician stuff, plumbing, not my forte. I don't know what's all out there. So is there something better than this? If there is, I, I would like to know. Justin and Roman have been making some serious headway upstairs. I originally thought we were just gonna do that room for ripping up the subflooring first, but they kind of went nuclear and took out all these walls and ripped up everything through here. So this room is pretty much all ready to have new subflooring laid down on. Justin and Roman left these little strips of boards going across. They're still nailed down. And basically they're just kind of holding these floor joists stiff right now until we actually get ready to lay down some of the new subflooring. So that way we're not making this all week. This is what helps tie the rest of the house together. And then over here, Justin and Roman are currently trying to get the floor in this room level. Basically what's underneath of this wall, this is an inch 
or a half an inch low, and that side isn't half an inch high. So they're having to chunk into some of the foam and being able to get the side of the floor joist exposed, just like that. And then they are taking an oscillating tool, notching out the bottoms of these floor joists, lowering them down half an inch. And then when we put in a new header board system over here, we will be lifting this side up half an inch, and then we will have a same plane going across the entire floor. But we accidentally got that spray foam ahead of time, so they have a couple hours worth of extra work right now to get all that out. Who told him to spray foam it? I did. He did. Oh, Justin did. He just admitted it. Justin and Roman have been moving quick. They got just a couple more floor joists left to do. I think there's four more at the back wall. They had to remove some of the floorboards in order for them to get back there and actually move things. So they're gonna be finishing that out and we have our load of wood coming here in just a few minutes. So I'm gonna go out into the shed and I need to make some room so that way we can get everything inside. Here we go. It is an absolute hurricane outside today. 50 mile an hour wind gusts, here we go. We're gonna hit it here in a second. There it is. <laughs> oh, burr, 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 burr. So here's what we got in the heated shop. This pile of boards is all twisted, warped, and bad, so this is going to be going back to the lumber yard. I'm gonna get this out of here. We are going to move that skid loader up forward. We need to kind of sort some of this stuff we have sitting right here. And then we should have enough room to get everything inside. It is another cold one here today. But we have a few more to go in there. You guys cannot see anything, so I'm just gonna show you what Austin is doing downstairs. He is helping us to make and keep this house clean again. nice and clean now so the load of wood should be here in just a few minutes and we have plenty of room now. Oh, I suppose it was probably a good thing that I got the shop cleaned out because Brandon from Champion Seed showed up for a seed delivery for the seed that we're gonna be planting this next year. So we're gonna have to find a new spot for the wood because it's probably more important than the seeds inside. But it was a good thing we made room. And I guess we have some good timing because the wood literally just pulled in. With rain as temperatures warm to around 40 degrees, wind. Justin finished trimming all these four joists. They all got adjusted and dropped down about half an inch according to our laser line and now we'll be moving on to that section because these one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe five, six four joists are going like that.
here on the outer side of our floor on the exterior wall our rim board is about inch high so I have a mark on one end and there is a mark on another end of the board I'm gonna snap the line and we're gonna just try to cut it with a circular saw instead of going through pains and effort of trying to remove it and then cut it or lower it down because it's actually notched into the studs as well and also another challenge is actually figure out where the mark is because of the wind that's shifting the house all the way around to look at this laser line look what i have here i have a brand new chuck line the older chuck line that i have has a gear ratio of six to one meaning by turning making one turn it makes six revelation inside of the gear on this pool those are too touchy too sensitive i didn't like that this one is only three to one Justin and I finished working in this little jet out which was mainly adjusting the floor joists because they were too high but as it always goes in the construction it took us longer than we thought we had to trim the ends on one side we had to drop the rim joist rim board on the out exterior wall because it was all high and now I think we're ready for the next step. We now got all the floor joists in the back room all trimmed down. And so we dropped that side half an inch. We still need to raise the other side half of an inch, but we're not going to do that yet because we have to do more building into another room. So that's going to be another day's project. But the room that we are currently sitting inside of, we need to get this leveled out. And right now, just beneath Roman, we have a temporary wall. So Roman is running some screws into those floor joists. So that way we will hold those floor joists where they're sitting. And then we are going to climb down, pull out that temporary wall below. Low, and then each one of these individual floor joists, some of them we need to move up, some of them we need to move down. The room was all wacky all over the place, so it's different in every single one. But Roman's got his laser set up right behind me, and so we are going to use the laser level as the level that we need to get every single one of those floor joists to. So we will have an even plane from that side of the room all the way to the other once we get done with this. It's time to lay some sheeting on the second floor. I'm gonna hand them to Justin. We've got the old sewer vent pipe that runs up through there and it's sticking down just enough and we're working under it. We keep bonking our head on the things. So we're knocking it out. I like your method, Roman. What? As soon as you start head. smacking, you shut your eyes and turn your head a little bit. Beats going, finding glasses that probably I wouldn't even be able to find. Why didn't offer me then? You never asked. Still never asked and you offered them afterwards. Yeah, you looked like you were busy over there though. I didn't want to interrupt. You know how people can get when you interrupt them while they're working. Years ago, Justin put this double plate in here. Now we have to cut it out and fix his mess ups. <laughs> I'm just 
gonna pop in here and give a big thank you to Justin and Roman for all the work and effort that they have been putting into this house. Honestly, they're the ones doing most of it. I am a farmer, so I'm still having farmer duties that I have to attend to, making sure loads are where they're supposed to be, people are doing what they're supposed to be doing, and there's a lot of information that is asked upon me that I have to calculate and figure out and contact my resources in order to be able to get to make sure that people have what they need to be able to do their jobs to keep the farm running. So. Today was definitely one of those days where I was jumping in and out a lot, not really helping in a lot of areas in the house here because then maybe I could work for 15 minutes and then I had to go do something on the farm. So I just want to say thank you to Justin and Roman because what I'm doing is annoying when I just jump in and out. I kind of just, it looks like I just get to do the fun jobs and I don't like being that guy. And they've been putting up with me very well jumping in and out like that, so. Thank you guys. One of the really fun things I'm learning about construction is you have days where you work all day. You can work all week and it feels like you got nothing done from a visual perspective. And then you have days where you just work a day and you get a ton of stuff done. And today is one where we got a lot of visual stuff done. Coming right up the stairs into the kitchen, we no longer have a ceiling in the kitchen. So we can look right upstairs. We have the same thing in the dining room. We can look right up there. And we almost have our temporary wall completely gone. When they brought out our new floor joists today, somehow the order got mixed up and we were shorted a few. So those are still coming. Otherwise, we would have some new floor joists sitting in right here. And then we would have this temporary wall gone and this area would be completely open, which would be really cool to see. I'm super excited to see that temporary wall go, so that way we have nice, big, open area. But going upstairs, we gotta, well, we gotta be careful going up these stairs because they're just kind of screwed in right there. So we're gonna stay as tight as we can to this side and try not to get caught on these nails on these studs. Number one most important thing, I got a screw in this stud so that way I can hang up my bags because we don't want our bags sitting on the ground. So I guess so that's one of the perks of the suspenders. You got the little spot where you can hang it up. But looking up here, we can look right down into the kitchen. We don't want to fall. That is 10 feet down. We have 10 foot ceilings on the main floor. So we'll walk our little goat trail right here. Then we look down, look at that. <laughs> Justin makes it look really easy when he's walking across these. And so does Roman, but I prefer to walk on the plywood whenever I can. But they got this room all done. Everything cut down half an inch. So we got that lowered. We still need to get this side over here raised up half an inch. So that way we are perfect. But we can get this subflooring in place, at least like over to here before we have to lift that. So that will not be a problem at all. Justin and Roman got all their lines laid down. It's so like this blue line right here is where the edge of our new subflooring is going to be. They actually have one piece put into place right here. They got everything trimmed around the edges. So that way we can be nice and flush against these studs, just like so. So they had to do some work over there. I think pretty much we are now ready to lay a bunch of subflooring on really half of the second floor of the house. Look at all that floor space we gotta do. Take a long, hard look behind me because this is the last time the house is ever going to look like this. We are not going to be able to look down into the living room, into the dining room, or into the kitchen from the second floor anymore. I have been looking forward to this day for a long, long, long time. We got all of our old subflooring out. We don't have to worry about squeaky floors anymore because the old subflooring is gone. We got everything all on the same plane. We got all of our measurements made so we know exactly where our new subflooring is going to be. So with that being said, we are 100% ready for our brand new subflooring. Justin and Roman have already taken off for the night so I'm gonna follow right behind them. This is all we got for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.